Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money Markets, uh, here with another edition of Investing with Charles. And joining me, as he does each and every week, is Greens and Fortunes co editor Charles Sizemore. And Charles, um, it's a special episode uh, today uh, because I'm going to pick your brain and find out the one big prediction you have for 2022. So uh, that's really, I'm just going to leave it on the table right there. And, and let you go. You've kind of clued me in on where you're going with it, but I think I think our, our, our viewers want to hear it directly from the Peruvian horse's mouth. Uh, and and, and what, what do you think? What is the big thing happening? And, and I realize you're going to have to set this up a little bit. What is the one big thing you see happening in 2022? Well, I see the price of Peruvian Paso horses going up. I mean, you already kind of let that the, the, the cat Sorry. out of the bag. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> So uh, I, I can't just come out and spill the. Uh, I can't, we have to, you know, build up to it first. So uh, we'll let's before we talk about what's going to happen in 2022, let's talk about what's happening right now in 2021 because it's relevant. So the biggest theme right now on everybody's mind. You know, this is what everyone's worried about. It's what dominates the headlines. You feel it in your pocketbook. It's inflation. Inflation has been really you know, the wrecking ball of, uh, of 2021. It's been what has kept the Fed on edge. It's what is accelerating the Fed's plans to pull back stimulus. It's all politicians want to talk about. It's all Americans want to talk about when they go to the grocery store. It's, it's pervasive. It, it's everywhere. Why? What's going on? Like What caused the inflation? Let's start with that. So there's really two types of inflation. Um, if there's such a thing as good inflation, you know, one is good inflation, the other would be bad inflation. So good inflation, if we want to call it that, is uh, demand-based, demand-pull inflation. That's when we get rising prices just because demand is super strong and everybody just wants to spend money. Uh, that's a sign of a healthy economy. The other is cost-push inflation. That's where you get rising prices, not because of higher demand, but because of supply shocks that just screw up the economy and cause things to be more expensive. Right now we have both. So we have demand pull inflation due in part as you know, people had snapped their wallet shuts during the pandemic, partly because they were stuck in their house, had nowhere to go, partly because they were just scared and didn't want to spend money, um, all of that has dissipated and you have people free spending again. Well, they're they're catching up. They're spending not just the money they would spend today, but the money they didn't get to spend last year, right? And then on top of that, you have um, you have you you had you know extra payments from the government that just put a little bit of extra money in your pocket. And that extra dollar, you're more likely to spend at least part of it, right? And then kind of the, the icing on the cake was the Fed's monetary policy because the Fed kept interest rates at zero. That encouraged just a lot of buying. Uh, it caught you know, a lot of borrowing. It just encouraged, well, it also just inserted a lot of new liquidity into the market, which manifests itself in higher prices, higher asset prices in the stock market, et cetera. So that's, that's that. And then of course, on the supply side, We've talked about it in Green Zone Fortunes. We've, we've, we've written about it in Money and Markets. It's, um, we all know the supply chain is a total wreck right now. When the factories in Asia were closed for, for stretches, we're still feeling the effects of that now, but it's not just factories that were closed then, just time and all that. All the ships that were supposed to be moving, you know, that would normally go from, let's just say, China to uh, LA, they got diverted during the pandemic. To, you know, instead of sending PlayStations, now they're sending whatever medical masks from, I don't know, make up a country from Vietnam to uh, Argentina. Just pick two random countries on the map, right? Every, all the boats are in the wrong places right now. Everything is just out of whack, and that's causing prices of prices of shipping, prices of, of everything ha, ha, has has really gone up. Labor shortage factors into that as well, particularly here in the U.S. So it all it all ties together to create um, the nastiest inflation we've had in decades, right? So my big prediction for 2022 is that towards at least the second half of the year, there, inflation is not going to be an issue anymore. In fact, we'll we'll be wishing we had inflation. I think actual deflation is 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 more likely, or at least very severe disinflation. Why? Well, let's pick apart the pieces here. Let's start with the, the demand based. This higher than usual demand is going to naturally dissipate. That post pandemic honeymoon is going to wane. It doesn't last forever, right? 
On top of that, the Fed is already pulling back their stimulus. We are, you know, they're no longer buying, they're no longer injecting 120 billion every month into the bond market. They've scaled it back to, oh, what are they up to now? What are they down to now? 80, I think. I mean, like they're- 80, 80, 80 billion. Yeah, I mean, they're scaling it back uh, and will continue to do so. Um, they are not raising rates yet, but they will. Uh, but really, even more important than, than the rates is is the, uh, the 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 direct stimulus, the uh, that, that that bond buying, and and that is already being scaled back. You add to that, you know, whatever is left of you know people were pocketing the the unemployment benefits and all that, and they've been gradually burning through it, and that's essentially running its course. All of these demand forces are really kind of draining out of the system little by little. They're not, not today, but well, I mean, it's starting today, but little by little, that's just draining out of the system. And then on the supply side, do you think the biggest, you know, the money makers and you know, the, 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 the captains of industry, are, they're just going to allow the supply chain to remain broken forever. There's too much money to be made in fixing it. Jeff Bezos is not going to permit Amazon's one day delivery to become two day delivery. He's there's no way, like there's only one direction the delivery thing goes in that shorter times, right? Um, you're, you're going to see the supply chain get fixed because there's just too much at stake for it not to. There's too much money to be made. The, the greatest minds, you know, the biggest pots of money in the history of capitalism are already at work fixing that. And they are, it's, it's being fixed now. It's just, it's a process. So all of these factors that, that created the inflation we're suffering from today they're already in the process of dissipating. Now it's not gonna show up in the numbers immediately. There is a lag, but it is going to show up in the numbers and it's going to be sooner rather than later. So that's my big call for 2022 is that inflation turns into deflation or if you wanna be technical, at least severe disinflation. It's interesting, interesting thought. And I, I, when we were talking about this, um, I, I want to look at more specifically like the consumer price index. This is the index uh, maintained you know, by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and, and it tracks um, the average increase or decrease in the cost of goods and services. And it does factor out some things and it factors in others. Uh, and, and looking at since 2000, and I look from 2000 to, to 2021, it has been consistently on the rise. So there was a bit of a blip in 2008, 2009, where it dropped off. A little bit, but right now it, it is gone from around 170, 175 in 2000. That index is now at 277.9. Uh, um, and what this indicates is that the price of things has gone up exponentially over the last 21 years. And, and, uh, and if, not exponentially over the last, it, it's, it's actually gone up steadily over the last you know, two decades. It's been, you know, the, the, what does the Fed want? The Fed wants a little inflation. They just don't want a lot, right? They want enough to kind of keep prices rising steadily. They just don't want so much that people notice, right? What's happened is it's it started to it started to look exponential recently. And that's and and that's why I, I went where I where I talk about exponential, that's where it really takes shape. Because if you look at the consumer price index from 2020 to 2021, we see a massive jump. Um, yep. The low was about 256 uh, in April of 2020, which is right on, uh, right as the, the COVID-19 pandemic was really uh, hammering, lockdowns were in place, countries were shutting their borders, uh, you know, shelter in place, all that. Since then, into November of 2021, the CPI has jumped more than 8%, and that is in, in uh, you know, a little over a year. That is, a, that is a massive jump. That is a huge jump, and, and it is... Uh, you know, and, and what you're saying is that that's going to reverse course and that's actually going to trend downward, maybe towards the second half of 2022. Is that how I understand your, your prediction? Yeah, that is exactly it. Well, what does this mean for investors, though? What does this mean for investors and, and even just general consumers? Well, it means a couple of things. You know, for one, uh, there's different certain investments do really well during times of inflation. Others do well during times of deflation. And the ones that tend to do very poorly in inflation, you will in deflation, are of course uh, fixed income bonds, um, bonds and bond substitutes like high dividend paying stocks, you know things like that. That that tends to be what does better during times of of deflation or severe disinflation. Whereas things like gold and more recently cryptocurrencies, you know, commodities, what have you, that tends to do well in times of inflation. Then there's things like real estate that can do 
relatively well in either, depending on if it's kind of more of a capital gains play or more of a, an income play, you know, if stocks can kind of do okay in either scenario as well. But you, you really don't want to own bonds if you think inflation's in the cards. You probably don't want to own a ton of commodities if you think deflation's in the, call, in the cards. And so, um, you know, the big trades of the last year have, well, yeah, let's say the last year, roughly, have been more inflation focused. Next year, I think it's going to be more of a deflation trade. I think, you know, fixed income bonds, I think they, they will likely do well. Conservative stocks as well, dividend bank stocks. Does this setup seem reminiscent of, of anything we've seen in the past? Indeed, it does. So, uh, yeah, Warren Buffett's partner, Charlie Bunger, is a... Uh, the guy's 97 years old and just doesn't really care who he offends. There's a certain freedom you get when uh, you're almost 100 years old and still in the game. You just you don't care, right? And so uh, Munger just comes out and says it. He's like, yeah, this market is even nuttier than the late 2000s. Um, and I, I tend to agree. What you, you do see some pretty significant parallel. Did I say the late 2000s? I meant late 90s. The, uh, you do see some parallels today to the, to the dot-com boom and, and bubble of, of 1990s. You, um, back then, it was nutty valuations on tech stocks of questionable business models. Like that, you know, pets.com, we're going to send 50-pound bags of dog food to your door. How's that going to work? How's that going to be profitable back then before? You know. Anyway, today, the, the, it's not so much the tech stocks. A lot of the tech stocks are actually very profitable today, unlike they were you know, 20, 30 years ago. It's more nutty stuff like you know, Shiba Inu cryptocurrencies, just random dog-themed cryptocurrencies. You know, Elon Musk posts a picture of a puppy and somebody becomes a billionaire overnight because, you know, that kind of irrationality. The, uh, good night, that, uh, my, my favorite thing to bash these days, that the Shiba Inu coin, at its peak, that thing was worth $40 billion. Forty billion. It went up something like fourteen. What was it? Fourteen million percent or some mm -hmm. insane. It, yeah. it just like, like the numbers that just make your eyes bug out. It, I, how? How? How is an imaginary dog themed currency that's not even a particularly good cryptocurrency, mind you? Like there are cryptocurrencies that are better than others for their intended purpose, right? This is very much an also ran that just had a cute puppy face as its meme. And that cute puppy face was somehow worth $40 billion. So anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm getting long-winded here. But what, what happened? So, so in the late 90s, you did have a nutty bubble, right? But then it all kind of came crashing down. People think it came crashing down in, in 2000. It actually started to come crashing down in 1998. In 1998, there were really some severe stresses in the financial system. Russia defaulted on its, on its debts. You had um, the, the Asian financial crisis that sort of, you know, each of these emerging markets kind of started to fall like dominoes. And then the biggest and most powerful hedge fund in the world at the time, long-term capital management, blew up. You know, this was the hedge fund literally run by the biggest brainiacs. Like, like the, the textbooks I studied in undergrad, these guys actually wrote. Like they were literally- by the guys who were running this hedge fund. Yes, like, 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 and they blew up and went supernova, and they actually kind of took down Wall Street with it, with them. So what happened was, at, you know, Alan Greenspan, who was chairman at the time, this is like something out of a movie. Like, like he got the heads of all of the Wall Street banks, like the heads of the five families of the mafia, or something. You got the heads of, of all the Wall Street banks into a into a, a room, private room. I imagine it was smoke filled. I don't know if it was smoke filled, but. It really I think this actually was part of a movie. I think this, there actually was a movie that had this scene in it. And if it was not, it, it, in, in my revised history, there was a lot of cigar smoke. I, I, there probably wasn't cigar smoke, but there really needed to be cigar smoke. Anyway, uh, you know, Greenspan brokered a deal between all of the, the Wall Street banks, basically made a pact that they were going to, you know, kind of bail each other out here and not call each other's debts in. Uh, otherwise, the 2008 meltdown would have happened in 1998. Um, it, it ended up not. That got, you know, Greenspan flooded the market with liquidity. Um, you know, he made this deal with the Wall Street banks. And what happened? The market rebounded very quickly and went screaming to even more nutty loony highs. Like, like if the dot-com bubble had ended in 1998, it would have been an epic bubble. 
but it went on to hit new highs. It went on to just soar, and then it became an even more epic bubble that finally burst in, in, in 2000. So I think you, the parallel today is we had a really big run in the market that looked like it, you know, the coronavirus killed it in, in, in 2000. But then the Fed came running to the rescue and pumped unprecedented uh, liquidity into the market. And what happened starting in April of last year, all the way up until until now, um, it's been this this surge in the market and, and not just in the stock market and, and everything, real estate, cryptocurrencies, you know, non-fungible tokens, just everything. It, it's been a bubble in everything because of, of this, uh, because of this, the stimulus. So to me, it does look like that's probably the best historical uh, analogy we're going to have. And we do know how that ended. So Charles' big, bold prediction for 2022, uh, look for deflation uh, or, or some sort of a reverse of inflation uh, coming poss possibly in the second half of 2022. So not right away, uh, but sometime maybe during the summer months, we'll start seeing that uh, 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 that drop down in, in, in inflation and, and going into a deflation uh, uh, potential posture uh, as we uh, lean into the tail end of 2022. So that's Charles's. I do want to remind you that I, I issued uh, one of my uh, big bold predictions uh, in our Bold and the Bear podcast last week. We'll put up a little link where you can uh, access that and find out my thoughts. Kind of in the same vein, um, but not really. So it's it's close, but not not quite to where Charles is going. And of course, up next, uh, Adam, Ode Adam Odell, our chief investment strategist, he will have his bold uh, prediction for 2022 coming up uh, here in the coming weeks, right before the uh, the holiday. Uh, so look forward to that. Also, do want to make sure that uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you are so. Uh, just make sure you hit that subscribe button, mash that notification bell right next to it. Get notified every time we put out a new video. We've got lots of videos that we put out. We've got the marijuana market update uh, that I host every week. We have Investing with Charles, obviously. Ask Adam anything. Uh, where I get to sit down with our chief investment strategist and ask him any question about the market that you want. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have the Bold and Bear podcast. If you do have a question about a particular stock or the sector, a particular sector, or maybe the broader market in general for any one of us, for Adam, for Charles, or myself, please email us. The email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We're going to put that email address right down below here. Or you can comment down below here on YouTube. Uh, as well. We'd love to get your feedback. We'd love to answer your questions and uh, and and give you the best insight that we can uh, into what you're looking for. Also, I would be remiss if I did not mention the mothership that is moneyandmarkets.com uh, on there every day. Myself, Charles, Adam, uh, you know, and a wealth of others. We're providing you content to uh, give you safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Sign up for our free daily e-letter. Also, uh, again, one more plug. Uh, I got to get them all out. Uh, but I would also encourage you to check out Green Zone Fortunes. This is our uh, investment service run by uh, Adam and Charles. I do uh, I do my part for it uh, as well. And, and this is where you get one uh, killer stock pick per month. Uh, and it, uh, it's a great service, provides you a lot of uh, guidance in terms of what to do uh, in the market. We'll uh, flash, hopefully flash a little uh, uh, connection to where you can get more info on signing up for that. So Charles, do appreciate your time this week uh, from uh, the lovely vistas of Peru, uh, as he is coming to us from more and more lately. Uh, not really sure if he's ever going to make his way back to Texas or if just Peru is going to be where it is. I mean, I'm a wanted man in Texas. I, I can't go back. Valid. Uh, that that is true. Uh, he does have wanted posters in numerous post offices from uh, Weatherford, Oklahoma, to uh, uh, to to Dallas, Texas. So uh, something to keep in mind. But again, uh, certainly appreciate everyone who watches these videos. Uh, make sure you give us a like. Uh, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We've got a lot of content that we push out uh, just for you. It's free. It provides the best investment information that we that, uh, that you can have. And again, absolutely for free right here on YouTube. So for Charles Sizemore, Greens and Fortunes co-editor, I am Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets, wishing everyone safe trading. <laughs>